Hello, this is Dr. Jillian Camwell from Troy University, and you've just finished watching um, the Allstate Audition Etude for Alabama 2022 Allstate, the Slow Etude from Fairlings 48 Studies. This is number 19. And of course, because it is a long, slow excerpt with lots of problems breathing, of course, we feel like we're in outer space, so I had to add a space theme for my background. Hope you enjoyed that. Um, the audition committee wrote um, quarter note, rather, excuse me, eighth note equals 100 for this, um, and I just felt this was way too fast for an andante tempo. It is typically played much slower, so I played it at a much slower tempo at uh, eighth note equals 76. That is significantly slower than is um, printed for this audition. So if it is too slow for you uh, for breathing, you can play it a bit faster, but the key thing for this um, excerpt is to play it um, with controlled breathing, good phrasing, and accurate rhythms. And we not, might not be able to play it quite as accurately if you play it um, at a faster tempo. That Andante um, needs to feel like a walking tempo, and I feel like 100 really feels more like a quick trot. <laughs> so if we're um, running along, it's not quite giving us that same feel. Anyway, um, when you are first learning this excerpt, um, keep in mind we are stopping for the audition at the end of the phrase in measure 18. So you will play until the downbeat of measure 18. And I did play the complete study for this video. Um, you do not have to play any further than measure 18. So from the beginning, this dotted rhythm, which returns over and over again, um, you can play fairly accurately. Um, don't be scared of that dotted rhythm. When we are thinking um, in the eighth notes, the 2-4 um, actually just really becomes like a 4-8 measure. So we're thinking 4 eighth notes to every measure. So if we're thinking in 4 at approximately 76, Da -dum, da -da -da -dum. So this is in four. So that dotted rhythm, bum ba bum 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 bum. We're just subdividing, just as though we were playing um, in quarter notes. That would be equivalent to a dotted sixteenth and sorry, dotted eighth notes, sixteenth rhythm. This is a dotted sixteenth um, and thirty second rhythm. So we're just thinking subdivision one beat. Da 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 dum dum da dum da 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 dum 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 da dum. So subdivide carefully. You can play it very accurately. It's not that hard when you um, subdivide it into your eighth note pulse. Um, please be careful with your accents that on the oboe, it's easy to overblow on our accents. So when we see the G and the second measure B flat um, having accents, we really want to open up um, our embouchure to achieve the accented sound, um, maintaining a sound, a presence after an accent is really important. So we don't want to play da and just have it loud. Um, for those accented notes, we really want to come away from an accented note. So it sounds more bell-like, bell tone. Da, 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 da. So coming back, um, the way you can tell if you're playing an accent efficiently is the note following your accent. So that D after the G, is it loud? Is it too loud compared to the G? You might be forcing your G instead of just opening your embouchure and then relaxing back into the D after the accented note. Our next challenge um, is playing the ornaments in this piece. And whenever we add ornaments, we want to add it to the correct rhythms. So 
take out the ornaments first when you're first learning this piece. Take out those trills, take out the grace notes, and make sure that you have the correct underlying rhythm. So we wanna add ornaments to make something more beautiful, um, not to disguise the fact that you don't quite know the rhythm. So starting in measure three, where we have those trills, you might just play it straight, F sharp, G, A, C, E flat, D, A, B flat, C, D, A, D, E flat, D, G. So da, 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 da. So taking out the trills, of course, I'm not singing the correct pitches here, but we get the idea with the straight rhythms with no trills. We then add the trills. You can add the trills without the grace notes afterwards. Da, 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 da. In order for something to be a true trill, we want at least two shakes of the finger. So that would be F sharp G, F sharp G. Um, ba, da, 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 da. And we want to stop the trill on the F sharp before you get out of that. It's easy. It's actually a little bit easier, I think, um, to go to the E afterwards. Da -da 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 so you can practice it in little chunks like that. Break it up. Again, first, no trills, no grace notes. Then try adding the trill. Then try adding the grace note. But underlying, we should really have that da 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 rhythm. Okay. Um, we have some grace notes at the end of measure four. So we have an F to E flat. Um, that would be a good place to use your left F instead of your forked F if you're writing, if you're um, marking in your F fingerings. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, I would Take your pencil and just go through and mark which fingerings you're going to use where. There are some opportunities to use um, regular F or forked F or left F. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're only using your forked F, you might be missing out on some opportunities to play in tune with a focused uh, sound on F. F is a, a very stable note on most oboes if you use the correct fingering. So regular F, I'll mark it on the page so that you can see, would be one, two, three, one, two, and then the little soup ladle or soup bowl shaped key right underneath your E key, which you're gonna use with your right, um, in, uh, not index, your right ring finger. Okay, so our forked F would be one, two, three, one, and three in the right hand. And we're going to save that um, for when we absolutely have to use it. Um, if you have three keys using that your left pinky plays, um, so that left on your left hand, your left pinky, if your oboe has only three keys there, then you probably will need to use your forked F occasionally. If it has five keys though, and you're not using all five keys, you might not know that your oboe has a left F on it. So we want to use the left F whenever possible um, in place of the forked F fingering. Um, it is the same tone quality as our stable, regular F fingering, whereas forked F is usually a little bit more sharp, you sometimes a little fuzzy in tone. Um, a good professional oboe will have a nice sound on most forked Fs because we have what's called a resonance key. But on st some student model oboes, that forked F can sound a little fuzzy and usually a little um, flat. And so some uh, method books and fingering charts have the addition of the E flat key added to a forked F. And then students that aren't aware of this um, might continue to use that E flat fingering on their forked F even when their oboe has an F resonance key and that makes the forked F sound sharp when we use the E flat when we don't actually need to use it. So if I, it sounds like I'm speaking a different language, then have a look at some fingering charts, see what your fingering chart um, suggests, but also look at what your oboe has. So if you have a left F, meaning five 
keys on the uh, that the pinky plays on the left pinky, um, you have a left F on your oboe, and we want to use that instead of forked F. So going through, if we count measures from the beginning, and we go all the way to measure four. Um, we could use the forked F um, on that grace note, but that is a great place to use left F instead for that grace note. Practice using it. Get used to using it instead of forked F. Another great place to use left F instead of forked F is measure 11. So we start on a left F, so I would mark a little L above that F fingering, sorry, the F on measure 11, um, and probably both uh, both of those F's in that measure because we're going to a half hold D and again if we if you are used to playing forked F or your oboe does not have a left F then you're probably going to um, stick with the forked F fingering um, but going from a regular F to half hold D is awkward and it's going to be a little bit bumpy especially when we're slurring down and then coming coming away from the E flat going to F again we're going to use our left F um, forked F only if your oboe does not have a left F. Uh, moving on to measure 13, we'll use a left F again in both of those situations. We have a high D fingering, so I'm going to write on the page um, the fingering for high D, which is half hole, two, three, open, I like to add my second finger on the right hand, which is our E key, and then you're going to add your low C, and that is our fingering for high D. Um, and that is going to give a little bit of stability to your high D, adding the, um, the E finger on your high D. So practice you getting up to that high D. We want it to sound nice and resonant and open. Um, in the next measure, we have another F, and because we're going to an E flat, I would again use our left F. Um, then we've got some F sharps carrying us all the way through measure 18. And because um, this audition only takes us to 18, I won't talk through the rest of this excerpt. Um, the other challenges are um, really musical ones, so we need to play with correct articulations, correct, um, that means tonguing of course, um, correct uh, dynamics, watch out that you are always going somewhere in your shaping of a phrase. So it's you're going to a note or you're coming away from a note. We're never just playing um, stagnant and not moving anywhere. So you can see the first four measures, we don't have um, anything, any crescendo or diminuendo marked, but that doesn't mean that you can't shape that phrase and show some musicality in your playing. It's really exciting when a judge hears that player make those artistic decisions on their own. It really shows that you're looking at the phrasing and seeing how you can shape it on your own. Um, one last little ornament that we have in measure 17, um, the little Da, 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 da. Again, just take it out when you're first learning this piece so that you can get the correct underlying rhythm. So we're tied over from the previous measure. So on that E flat tie, it would be four tie dum ba da 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 da. That's measure 17. So again, that would be measure 16 would be count four. Ta da 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 da. That would be measure 17 without the grace notes. When you add those in, we can't change the underlying rhythm. So again, that would be with the grace notes. Ta ta da 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 da. So we can hear that beat three, the G natural, and beat four, the B flat, are in their correct place and we're adding the ornaments around it, okay? I hope this helps um, set you up for a successful audition for this 2022 year of Alabama Allstate. Please comment or send me a message. Um, if you have any questions, I'm happy to help. Good luck, have a great, fun time.